So I thought it would be useful to have like a definitive New Horizons build style video. Of course, we have a spider web. That's definitive New Horizons right there. <coughs> hey besties, it's Nat, back again with another video decorating in Happy Home Paradise. That's right, besties. We are in HHP right now visiting my lovely friend Pearl in her beautiful home, which we actually decorated together on stream a couple of weeks ago. I've actually been doing a series lately playing Happy Home Paradise decorating cat houses. So we did Tangy's 50s Diner and we did Bob's Kid Core Playground. And in the middle of those, we did Pearl's Katatsu Citadel. That's what she called it, not me. She wanted a cozy, old-fashioned Japanese house with a katatsu and that's what we gave her and I'm really really proud of the result and the stream chat was proud of it too everybody was so hyped about this build and one thing that people kept pointing out was the fact that this is a very quintessential New Horizons build I will say having been playing this game since 2020 I have developed a few habits let's say when I'm building and when I'm decorating and one of the main <laughs> signatures I guess of a New Horizons build is clutter uh, specifically sort of like an organized chaos where like there's mess and color colors and, and objects everywhere, but I do actually try to place everything down with a purpose in mind. And I thought going back through this stream VOD and explaining my process for y'all would be the perfect like definitive New Horizons building guide. So if you ever saw one of my interior builds and you thought, oh, I wanna decorate like that, this is the right place to be bestie because I'm gonna go through all the techniques that I use, all of the thoughts that I'm having while I'm building and sprinkled in between, there's gonna be a little villager drama. So get excited for that besties. But if you do wanna see the whole build in its entirety with all of the chat messages and suggestions from besties and all of my my thoughts as I was building. The VOD for that stream and all of my other Happy Home Paradise streams will be linked down below so you can check those out. But if you want the abridged instructional version of how to build a New Horizons old messy house <laughs> interior, then you are in the right place, bestie. Don't go anywhere. Grab yourself a snack, grab yourself something to drink, and let's get right into it. Hello again, besties. It's voiceover Nat. And before we jump into Pearl's exterior, which we're working on now, uh, I just wanted to remind y'all that this video is going to be a mixture of build tips and story time life stuff. Uh, so if you're only interested in the build tips, I would recommend skipping to the chapter where I'm working on the interior because that's going to have a lot more decoration related stuff going on. Um, the exterior is cute, but it's very simple. So I decided that this is the section of the video where we're going to do a lot of story time, a lot of stuff about Nautilus, a lot of stuff about me. Um, that'll be in the other part of the video too. But uh, if, you, if you're only interested in that, then feel free to skip ahead. Um, but for now, we're decorating Pearl's exterior, and I will talk about it for a minute. As you can see, we're taking a long time to pick how we want the outside of her house to look. Um, and I wanted to base the colors off of Pearl herself, like her spots. So we ended up going with the red roof and the white paneling and the brown door. Um, but beyond that, uh, we wanted to do like a traditional Japanese style house. So the first thing we did on the stream was actually move her house to this peninsula. I've previously used this lot for Dobie's vacation house and his house had a very similar style and his prompt was a writer's retreat. And funnily enough, uh, the interior of this house is actually based off of a writer from a manga and movie, Seaside Stranger slash Stranger by the Shore by Kaneki, which is one of my favorite manga and favorite movies. Uh, I talked about it before in the Manga Rex video actually, which is for Extra Besties, which is like the channel memberships. Uh, you pay two bucks a month, you get extra streams, extra videos. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Uh, but uh, you, don't, you don't need to have watched that video to understand this. This is just based off of the house from that movie that the main character Shun lives in while he's trying to write his next novel. Um, and for the exterior, uh, I decided to sort of pull inspiration from the surrounding area because there's all of these cedar trees. So at first I was just going to decorate it with cedar trees to sort of have it blend in with the pre-existing landscaping. But then I thought it would be more fun to use like the, the Japanese pine trees that come with the game as like an object. So we put a bunch of those around, put a bunch of rocks, we put a bunch of weeds. It's not a New Horizons build if there's not weeds everywhere. Um, we did a little bit of decorating on the beach with some custom design codes and some objects. Um, I actually also have 
a beach decorating series. So if, you, if you're stuck decorating your beaches and you see this beach and you're like, oh, that's cute. I have an entire series of decorating all the beaches on my first island Nautilus that you can check out. I'll link that for y'all. But speaking of the Nautilus, for those of you who are new here, first of all, welcome in, happy to have you. Uh, but Nautilus is my very first island. It was my day one island from March of 2020 and I finished it last year. So that island took me a while and I got to know my villagers very well. And as I spent more time on Nautilus, drama started to develop in between my villagers. And there's sort of like a love square happening, I guess, uh, between Coco, Genji, Marshall, and now Fuchsia. So basically it started with Coco and Marshall fighting over Genji, which frankly, very undeserved. Like Genji, he's not worth all of that. Um, but to be fair, Genji was the one who was playing the field. So he is very much culpable in this entire situation. But uh, those two are fighting over Genji. And then Genji ended up going with Marshall, and then Coco ended up dating Fuchsia, who lives on the other side of the island from all of them. Poor Kiki. Kiki lives in that neighborhood, and like, she actually comes up in the story. Um, but that was th the state of things when I finished Nautilus. But as I've been playing on it again recently, things have been happening, okay? Things have been moving and shaking. The last I had heard from them, Coco and Marshall had sort of banded together and established that Genji is the problem, which is true. But at the same time, Coco, she's kind of a mean girl. She's never been a girl's girl per se. Uh, inclu that includes Marshall, uh, that includes Marshall. They should be allies, uh, but Coco can't help herself. And apparently that remains true because tell me why the other day I opened my game and find Coco and Genji standing in town square singing together. Like, what is that about? What is that about? And also, especially Shady, because you know what Marshall does every single damn day? You know where Marshall is posted up every day trying to live his pop star fantasy? Exactly, exactly, exactly. I'm sorry, y'all, I need to calm down. This was this was days ago and I was still heated about it. But of course, as, as soon as I saw them brazenly doing this in front of me, I immediately ran to Marshall's house to go tell him and he was clearly in a state of denial. I don't think I am the first person who has confronted him about this. And I know that because I have evidence and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute when we move to the inside, but I wanna make sure that I am able to explain the beginning of the inside when we get there. Um, so once again, that is her Katatsu. That was part of her prompt and we decided to keep that in the build. Um, but right now I'm expanding the size of the room. I'm sort of making it like a like a, like a a long re rectangle, like a, like a, is it, this is, this is hamburger way, right? Hot dog way would be if it was tall and skinny. This is hamburger way, right? I think, anyways. <laughs> That doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is we're placing down some partition walls that we're later going to use to separate the kitchen space and the living space and the bedroom space. Um, but we're only going to use a couple of them and I actually used more partition walls in this build than I normally would, but I really like to use them sparingly just because they're so like big and obstructive and there's lots of other ways that you can sort of break apart spaces and make defined spaces without like having these huge walls in the way that kind of obstruct your view of your own build. Um, so we're going to be experimenting with that a little bit later on in the build, but right now we're picking a wallpaper and flooring and this took me forever. So as you can see, there is a pillar next to the partition walls that I'm using to sort of like finish off the edge of it so it looks more put together. Um, and it only comes in a couple of wood colors. There's a couple of other uh, uh, column options that we could have used, but I was using this wooden one and I was trying to match the wallpaper to the column and vice versa, but I didn't like how dark this wallpaper felt. I actually used this wallpaper in Dobie's house and I like how it looks like a sliding screen door, um, but I wanted the room to feel more like light and airy and like different from Dobie's vibe. And I felt like this dark color didn't really fit Pearl's aesthetic. Like I, I didn't feel like her. So we ended up going with a light colored wallpaper and a dark floor with tatami mats everywhere. And that was hard for me to, to get to because I was so, I was so committed to having the wallpaper and the flooring match and be the same wood tone. You know who talks about that a lot? You know who's the queen of matching wood tones? 
Lil Simsy. She's a Sims YouTuber. I also uh, dabble in a little bit of Sims 4. In fact, I'm planning an Extra Besties video where I share some of my Sims builds that I've built off camera. Um, but that's that doesn't matter for now. What matters for now is normally you would want to match the wallpaper in the floor and have them be like a similar color. So you'd want like a dark wood floor and a dark wood paneling on the wall. But for this house, I thought it would be nicer to have like different colors. So we ended up doing the dark wood on the floor and then the light wood on the wall and it sort of feels more homey and more lived in, if that makes sense. Like it, it feels like maybe the house got renovated so they don't really match anymore and it ended up just fitting the vibe a lot better. That's a very long-winded way of explaining that but I hope it makes sense. Uh, and I'm working on the kitchen now, placing down the system kitchen and a couple of other objects. I'm very particular about colors besties. So this wallpaper is going to change eventually, but I was struggling trying to figure out the colors and I was also struggling figuring out like what objects to place down and I ended up using, I think, a locker as like part of the kitchen. Yeah, just because I thought that the color and like the, the aesthetic of the locker made the most sense as like a fake kitchen counter. I don't know how else to describe it. There are some things that are just like particular to me and I just have to like try everything in the catalog to see what works and uh, I feel like I've gotten more like experimental i guess <laughs> experimental in the sense of like trying different things i've gotten more creative in like what objects i use as i've gone on with playing this game now we're switching the wallpaper over and you can see the vibes are coming together it's it's a lot better now it, it feels brighter and and airier and and just more pearl and honestly another thing that i struggle with with these partition walls is that i'm not able to place objects on them uh, like I, I want to have something high up on the right side closer to the actual wall itself uh, To balance out the height of the system kitchen height is also very important to me in a build like aesthetically Like I need everything to be balanced So in lieu of having something hanging off the partition wall or something on the ceiling I ended up putting the fan on the side wall So it sort of peeks out and you can see it and I felt like that balanced out the system kitchen a little bit And I put it a little bit higher up. So those are a couple build tips how was that best user? Did you enjoy that? Was that helpful in any way? We talked about balance. We talked about color, adding a little pop of color there with those cans on top of the fridge. Uh, we talked about uh, how partition walls are very tall. And now I can get back to talking about my drama. Uh, the, not my drama. This is Marshall's drama. <laughs> my drama is the fact that they're always doing construction while I'm trying to do a voiceover. I don't know how that happens. I don't know if they like they look at me in the window and they see me with the mic on, but I, that, ignore them. We're talking about Marshall, okay? So I tried to reach out to Marshall, didn't work. He was in denial. He clearly needed me, and we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, I wasn't the first person who tried to do this. In fact, weeks ago, Maddie was actually getting physically in between Marshall and Genji, being like, girl, this has to stop. And I know that Maddie knows because Maddie has eyes and ears everywhere with her little, her little dog ears. And speaking of eyes, eyes and ears, besties, you know who has some eyes and ears is Kiki. Now, Kiki is not a drama queen. She just happens to live in the drama queen neighborhood. And normally she's not involved. Normally she minds her business. She keeps to herself. She's kind. She's lovely. She's wonderful. Here I was messing with the tatami mats for a good minute. And I was like, oh, I can do the tatami mats on the whole floor and then have these wooden panels. That was dumb. That was a bad idea. I completely forgot that there is a rug that looks like a tatami mat. And we're going to figure that out in several minutes. Uh, but while that's happening... <laughs> Uh, let's go back to uh, what's going on with Marshall. So uh, Kiki also tried to intervene. She was actually getting up in Coco's face, being like, Coco, girl, what are you doing? And I really appreciate her for doing that because normally Kiki doesn't involve herself, but she saw, she was like, I know this has to stop. This, this crossed a line. Coco, you're too involved with this man. That's not your man. You have a girlfriend. Does Fuchsia know about this? I don't even think Fuchsia knows. Marshall clearly knows and is in denial, but Fuchsia, she lives on the other side of the island. So like, she doesn't see all of this. That's crazy. And also I saw Coco tried to play nice with Marshall in the town square the other day and like, stop being fake. You're being fake. Don't do that. Poor Kiki too. Like she clearly is not built for drama because <laughs> Tell me why I went to I went to the coffee shop and then went to Brewster and she was sitting in there. She was she's so world weary. She's been through so much and she's not in the drama. She's not in the drama. She just has to live next to it. And I really feel for her. I really do. You know what? While I'm figuring out these tatami mats, let's take a break for another build tip, besties. Uh, I've placed down some more objects in the kitchen and I have changed the colors of some things. We're balancing things out. We have the white system kitchen and the white washing machine. We have a brown fridge and then like a light brown countertop with that locker and we're putting in pops of color. There's a little bit of red 
in the the grocery bag and we put some red on the stove with the fish and there's a little bit of red in the cans and there's also yellows and blues and a little bit of green so mostly primary colors so we have a lot of primary colors going on um, we also have the, a lot of plants so the, those balance out the green and they bring out the green so i'm trying to add like little pops of color sort of evenly throughout the space this very neutral looking space while also you know being very mindful you want to you want to be mindful of the colors that you're using and it looks random and it looks cluttered but it's actually very thoughtful and very very purposeful we're doing animal crossing built with purpose exactly besties exactly um and i'm also using a custom design a custom design has appeared this is a custom design that i have placed on the ground as a tile mat if you go into your custom designs uh in the little app on your nook phone you can place things down as a tile mat which is basically like a little rug and i'm using that to create like a little deck space over there which i think worked out really well and we put some more partition walls to look like actual sliding doors so like the doors have slid open and you're looking out over like a like a rice paddy or a big field so you know there you go besties another build tip hopefully that was helpful hopefully you learned something we're placing down another tile mat this time a fake rug on the ground very fun very cutesy uh and let's get back to the drama now that we've learned some stuff you guys earned it you earned it so let's go back to that to the to present day no don't worry about kiki don't worry about maddie present day i go to marshall's house he is clearly in denial about what is going on and he has some awareness that coco and genji are seeing each other again so i immediately exit marshall's house and notice that genji and coco have now dispersed from the town square they have run they do not want to be seen uh and rightfully so they should have been more embarrassed from from when i walked up and saw them doing that uh but i notice genji is at home and i walk inside his house and that man that man is asleep the absolute audacity okay this is why listen as much as coco is a very mean girl she is not nice she's not to be trusted and i will never defend her behavior i will always point to genji he is the problem okay because his first thought after getting caught canoodling with his neighbor who he's not supposed to be talking to because she has a girlfriend and he has a boyfriend who is also his neighbor his first thought is not oh i need to go to marshall's house to grovel for forgiveness even though he sees the, the smoke coming out of his chimney he knows he's there it's like no 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 no. the first thought i have in my head is i'm gonna go to sleep the absolute audacity of that bit anyways there's more to this story that we'll get to in a minute i have to take a break to calm down because i'm angry just thinking about this uh but we're actually about to do another smart build thing so i'm going to give you all another build tip right now i talked before about uh using the partition walls and using other ways to break up a space and we're about to do that right now obviously we are using just a regular partition they're just you know it's just a partition that comes with the game it's shorter uh it takes up less space uh it's a little more visually interesting and we're also using a piece of furniture we're using this little dresser a lot of people use this dresser as fake stairs because it's like stepped which is very smart those people are quite smart. I love I love this community. Everyone is so creative and, and, and has such good ideas. Uh, but we're using both of those together to sort of create a, a little separation. So we have like a little entryway with the partition and then it leads you into the kitchen. And then beyond that, we have a little separation between the entryway and the office, which we're creating on the other side of that entryway. Uh, so that's another way you can create uh, partitions in the space without it feeling really like crowded and claustrophobic because I just feel like sometimes the partition walls are a little too much they're a little too much and they 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 make the space feel a little closed in so I wanted to have a separation of the spaces without having that that big looming wall separating the two and you, once again you can't place stuff on it which is really annoying I wish that you could and I hope that they they add that in a future Animal Crossing game I know there's a lot of speculation about like the future of Animal Crossing at this point um and feel free to do that in the comments I love hearing people's theories about like what the next game is going to be like like on the next console or like they're going to do more expansion stuff like that I'm curious what y'all's thoughts are but we are adding in uh, more more colors I also was very mindful of uh this little curtain hanging down from the ceiling because i didn't want it to block the view of the space because everything that you hang from the ceiling is gonna like obstruct your view in some way depending on where it is in the room uh so i think i ended up keeping that um but i was i was paying attention to like the angles best you gotta check your angles always 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 check your angles and we're also continuing that theme of trying to have mismatched colors and wood tones and textures uh to, to sort of reiterate sort of like the lived in vibe of this build like you know she's she's gone thrifting she's collected this furniture over the years it's not all going 
going to match. And as builders, when you're building the space, it, it, it is important to like mix things up purposefully to make sure that it, it looks random, but with intention, if that makes sense. Like we're gonna we're, we're gonna have like the, the old wooden color on the table in the kitchen, and then we're gonna have the light wooden color on the partition, and then we're gonna have a different color on the on the on the dresser and all that stuff. And you also wanna make sure that all of the different wood tones are like evenly spaced throughout the room. Like you want it to look random, but also be purposeful if that makes sense. Like you wanna have like oh we have the the old wooden table in the kitchen so next to it we're going to put a light wooden partition and then next to that we're going to put a different color wood on the dresser and then it goes on and on and on throughout the room you want it to all be mixed up when you like scan across the room with your eye and now we're working on the tv area which is really really fun uh, we put this little nemo next to the tv the tv vcr is my favorite tv in the game i need to stop saying tv Anyways, um, we put Nemo next to it. One, because you can actually see him in his tank. People were suggesting using the goldfish, which would have been really cute, but you can't see the goldfish uh, from the side. You can only see it from the top because it's in like a bowl. So I wanted it to be visible from the side. And I also wanted it to like fit proportionally next to the TV. I wanted something that was the same height as the TV or like a similar height, but not like exactly the same. And also like didn't feel like it was crowded too much because the TV is like kind of too big for that table. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that it like proportionally fit in the space. Um, and the colors also fit. Uh, we have a lot of like blue and green, which are like cooler colors. So Nemo, he's orange. There's an orange fan next to him. There's also the red in the books. Um, and we're also going to add this furniture piece right here. And as you can see, I put some things on the wall to sort of balance out the height of that furniture piece with the, the height of the TV and Nemo, which are like lower to the ground. So you keep the height balanced. We keep the colors balanced. It, it just, it's balanced. The space feels lived in and cluttered, but also uh, very relaxing and cozy and not like too overwhelming. Like it's not like too full. Everything feels like it's in the right spot, if that makes sense, hopefully. I really do hope that these explanations make sense. I really do hope that someone gets something out of this video because I, I I do this sort of style and aesthetic of build, not like traditional Japanese style house, but like a cluttered lived in type of house with like a very similar color scheme and vibe very often. And so I thought it would be useful to have like a definitive New Horizons build style video. Of course we have a spider web that's definitive new horizons right there is the spider web <laughs> uh, but i thought that, that would be like a useful reference for anyone who's like inspired by how i build or like wants to figure out like what what am i doing to make my builds look this way um not that i'm the only person who builds this way because that's very much not true but just these are just some things that i keep in mind when i'm building um that hopefully will translate that y'all can use in your own builds because y'all are really good builders. I've done several build tours of people's islands of people have your own paradise builds and y'all are really talented. So this is a community that we should be sharing knowledge. We should be, we should be passing each other notes because we could be creating some amazing stuff, but uh, enough education besties, enough education. It's time to get back to drama. I need to finish up this story because <laughs> it's taking me way longer to tell in between all of these educational bits. Uh, but where we left off, I just left Genji's house very angry, very upset, and I go home and I'm minding my business. I actually went fishing on my way home and I caught a salmon and I learned a new recipe for salmon. I was like, oh, I'll go home and I'll cook. So I go home and I make my little salmon and guess who comes in the door the second I put that plate down on the table? Guess who walks in the door? That's right, Marshall. Marshall came all the way over to my house on the other side of the island because clearly that man is in distress. Okay, he is going through it. And uh, he tried to play it cool once again. He was like, oh, you know, let's play high card, low card. You know, let's, let's, let's eat. Let's, you know, let's hang out. He was going through it. And I felt really, really bad because he didn't want to say it. Because like, you know, it's hard to talk about. It's like your boyfriend is cheating on you from the entire island. Like that's really embarrassing. Especially because like he's your neighbor and he won't even talk to you. I really feel for Marshall. I really do. He is a bit of a clown. He is a bit of a diva, but he doesn't deserve this. He doesn't deserve this. I just felt really, really bad. <laughs> But yeah, he came to visit me for some moral support and I tried to provide it as best I could, but I don't know how well that worked. Hopefully he's doing better now than he was a couple of days ago. <laughs> That's not the only drama that happened though. And I'll get into that in just a second, but I just want to mention how I'm using clothing as decoration. So right now we're putting down like a little purse or a bag, but it's not a New Horizons build if there's not a sock on the ground. And in this build, we have multiple. There are socks everywhere. This girl, she needs to do laundry. She needs to get her stuff and put it in that washer and then fold it and put it away. And I should not say that I'm a hypocrite. I also need to do laundry in real life, but uh, it's not a New Horizons build if there's not a sock on the ground. And this build has plenty of them, as well as uh, some slippers by the 
the little the little deck so she can like put her slippers on when she comes back in the house and the leaves on the floor as well i'm trying to cover every surface so i want the floor to be cluttered i want the walls to be cluttered i want the like the 3d space to be cluttered with lots of stuff so i'm trying to trying to make sure every surface has stuff on it oh and speaking of clutter we are working on the dining room table right now i wanted to have uh because it's supposed to be like a writer's retreat i guess i'm sorry dobie for stealing your house concept but it was a good concept and shun also stole your house concept so what are you going to do about it uh, but i wanted it to be like a writer's retreat so i was putting like paper everywhere and uh i also really love using the sloppy table it's one of my favorite objects in the game i wish they had the whole sloppy set i wish they had the whole thing i, I wish they hadn't stopped at like two or three items but the sloppy table is great because it has stuff underneath it and normally you can't place stuff underneath tables in this game it's not the sims i sometimes wish it was but it's not the sims you don't have that level of freedom there's no move objects on in this game so we work with what we got and the sloppy table is pretty good because it has stuff underneath so it adds to that cluttered vibe and i also added the custom design on the ground next to it uh to make it look even more cluttered like she has her plastic bag on the ground uh, and added a couple things on top of the table to make it look really lived in and we're working on the bedroom area now which is honestly the most simple part of the room especially because it is the most closed off that's what i meant when i said like i felt like this build in particular was more closed off than i normally would do it like having that extra partition wall and having it be like this tiny little space in the corner i wouldn't normally do something like that it's just not how i, I like to build but uh it ended up working out really well in this build so if there's one thing you take away from this is that try things that you wouldn't normally try right like i i normally wouldn't build like that but i did and it ended up turned out really good so maybe the lesson to be learned here is not to follow any of my advice you know think about that um <laughs> another thing i want to point out is i don't know if you can see it right now but in the living room yes the the stack of cushions i first of all i wanted to have different colors and patterns on all the cushions to make it look once again more cluttered and and visually cluttered like having a bunch of patterns that are mi mixed and matched and different colors and things but i pay attention to the height i wanted to have the tall stack of cushions in that corner to balance out the tall stack of books and the fan in the other corner so that when you're looking at it from the front it it feels balanced you know you have the 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 height from the cushions on the right and then you have the height from the fan and the books on the left and then the middle it's sort of lower and then that's made up for it by the katatsu in the middle just want to make sure like the visual weight of the room is balanced without being perfectly symmetrical i don't want everything to be the exact same height or the exact same shape or the exact same color um that once again don't follow my advice for every build because there are a lot of builds where having symmetry is really powerful and looks really really cool but for like a super messy lived in house like this having having symmetry is gonna like immediately catch your eye and it's gonna sort of like pull you out of it so i want to make sure that it's balanced without being like the same on each side if that makes sense how many times in this video have i asked y'all if that made sense like i i i'm not gonna find out until the video goes up if it, any of it made sense so hopefully it does oh and i was uh experimenting with uh the hallway leading up to the house chad did not like these bricks i they they wanted the wooden floor and you know what looking back i agree i thought that the bricks would be fun it's the color is fun the texture is fun we have enough texture by the door with the leaves so we don't need to worry about that but we're actually coming up to the end of the build um, i'm about to add some sounds to the room and i also finished up the bedroom area um there wasn't a lot that i could fit back there it was a very small space but i made sure to put the tall items like that bookshelf up against the back wall uh so that it didn't like a further obstruct the the space because like you can sort of get the the partition walls to fade away but you can't do that if there's like two items in the way so i wanted to make sure that you could still see back there um and we're shining things we're shining things besties it's very important to shine things okay don't forget that you can shine things there's lots of different shines you can use we had a whole discussion in chat about which shines people like to use and we also figured out that you can shine the partition walls you can shine them like any other object and someone in chat suggested we shine them with butterflies which was so smart and like look look at that that's actually genius and it looks like there's butterflies like coming in from the, the meadow outside it's beautiful um but we did that make sure to shine your objects let me know in the comments what your favorite um shine effect is in this game i think my favorite is probably the little like fizzy pop things or maybe the butterflies i use the butterflies a lot on like plants and things and we're also adding wall decor we're adding uh some some paintings and i think we also add maybe like a hat we added a picture of pearl of course this is actually very cute because uh in the movie seaside stranger uh they, they have a ton of cats that live in the house where the, where the movie takes place so it, it was cute to do this house for a cat specifically uh we're adding some some decoration to the walls remember you can add clothing to the walls you can add socks you can add hats i love hanging a little hat on the wall by the door or in the bedroom you can add a shirt you can add glasses oh that was a kotatsu citadel that was her old house and look at her new house it's so much better oh my god 
I was so caught up in talking about the build that I completely forgot about the Nautilus drama. That is so unlikely, besties. I'm so sorry. I know a lot of y'all are invested in this drama, and I appreciate that. I'm invested too. Um, but that just means we're gonna have to continue it in the next video, which also means there will likely be developments, which will be exciting. Uh, but I will say now that there is another character involved in this particular story. Um, and if you know anything about Nautilus, I'm sure that you can guess who it is, because it is in fact Bo. Bo is involved, and he's involved in a very stupid way, and he also insulted me several times throughout the course of this drama, which is also in, in character for him. Um, but we're, we're gonna wrap up the build now. I ended up naming it Stranger by the Shore, which was just so, so perfect. I'm so glad that we sort of tapped into that as our inspo for this build. Uh, but that's gonna be it, besties. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you so, so much for making it to the end, and I hope that you got something out of it. I, I hope that me trying to explain my chaos and my mess maybe helped someone out there and hopefully it inspires you to at least pick up the game let me know if you played the game along with me let me know uh if you have any build tips that you'd like to share genuinely please share them in the comments get get a dialogue going besties y'all are really talented so i want to see some build tips in the comments uh, if you liked this video you could leave a like that really genuinely helps me out a lot once again leave a comment letting me know what you thought if you really liked this video you can subscribe and hit the bell to be notified every time i post or go live like i said at the beginning this was a stream vod i stream pretty often over here on youtube and i actually kind of want to experiment with having like a stream schedule so be on the lookout for that besties but for now the best way to catch the streams is to follow me on social media join my discord in the description and hit the little bell and set it to all notifications and then you'll know every time i go live so you can be in chat and you can influence the next happy home paradise build or if you want you can check out the previous happy home paradise streams we've done and let me know if there's any of those vods that you'd like to see turned into videos as well uh speaking of happy home paradise though besties the next video on the channel is going to be another hhp build but this time it's going to have something to do with the real life animal crossing museum aquarium crossover event that's happening at aquariums all over the u.s right now so be on the lookout for that besties as well as the next tokyo 3 build which will be coming after that so a lot of stuff's happening besties we got tokyo 3 we got nautilus we got happy home paradise it's very exciting uh and i'm so happy to have all of you here for all of that so once again thank you so so much for watching and i will see you all again very soon bye besties Ooh, and if you're interested in becoming an extra bestie, this month's exclusive video, which is a QA, and a uh, will be going up this weekend along with our first extra stream of the month, which is going to be Story of Seasons. So check that out if you're interested.